Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on .NET Nuclear's MVP .NET Nuke Module Development Template. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to install the template, how to create your module project using the template, and how to fix some common issues that you might have. To start, you can visit my website, .NETNuclear.com, and see the page for the MVP template. It's under the Products section. I recently added the template to a project to Coplex.com, which is also linked from the .NET Nuke Forge. The template version at the time of this recording is 1.2. The prerequisites for this template are .NET Nuke 7 and Visual Studio 2012. This template supports the most current development in .NET Nuke. The most significant change that I made in version 1.2 is full support for both IIS and IIS Express web servers. Before we start looking at the template, I want to review the setup that works best with the template. For IIS, we need a .NET Nuke 7 website configured in the typical way that's taught in many .NET Nuke environment tutorials and videos. As you can see, I have the website files extracted into a folder on my, on my computer. Then I have an IIS application created for that website and configured. The only addition that we need to do is add a binding for dnndev.me, which is a convention many developers are adopting. So the way we do that is by starting up Notepad as an administrator and then opening the following file. C colon Windows System32 Drivers ETC and then the host file. As you can see, you can't see it right here, but if you go to file name and add star dot star open, then you can see the host file. What we're going to do is we're going to add a line for dnndev.me, and we can just copy one of these examples. And this is a what this what we'll do is make a DNS mapping to 127.0.0.1, which is our our loopback or our local local host and we'll call that dnndev.me and then we'll save it. Now after you do this, in order to make the change, uh, in order for your computer to recognize the change, you may need to do a DNS flush. And the way we could do that is open a command prompt and type ipconfig slash flush DNS. Then what I like to do is go back into IIS and add a binding and what I like to do, uh, the convention that I like to use is name it uh, like project.dnndev.me where project is maybe the name of the project, the name of the company or client you're working for um, and that way we can have multiple uh, projects all with that dnndev.me uh, which tells us that we're they're all kind of projects that we're working or we're developing locally so I'll call it dnn7.dnndev.me now if I open this site up it should load up our DNN7 installation. Great. Now for uh, IIS, which we'll talk about later, or I'm sorry, IIS Express, we need, we also need to have our DNN7 installation ready before we create our module project from the template. Again, you use the same environment that I go over in a lot of my other videos. If you are unsure of how to get .NET Nuke up and running, please refer to some of my uh, to, or to my DNN basic series videos to for more information on, on specific environment um, and getting .NET Nuke running locally. Now let's download and install the template. You can find the template again at the my website dotnetnuclear.com if you go into the products section and you f find the um, product details which is the landing page for the template and then there you can find a download link 
this download link will just redirect you to the Coplex site and you can go directly there. It's dnnmvptemplate.coplex.com. You can click on to download the latest version, which at this time is 1.2. Once the file is downloaded, you simply need to double click on the v6 file and it'll install it. Once the installation is complete, we can verify it by going to Visual Studio 2012 and going to Tools, Extensions and Updates, and looking for the template. And as you can see, it's actually not here. The reason for that is because I had Visual Studio open already. You, anytime you install a new template, you need to restart Visual Studio in order to see that template. So I'm going to do that now. I'm starting it as an administrator. Again, we'll go to Tools, Extensions, and Updates, and here it is. So now let's create our first project. We'll go to New Project, and we'll select our template. It's under the Visual uh, C Sharp templates. I'm going to name the project My MVP Module. And then the directory we're going to pick is actually going to be our .NET Nuke installation folder, which is uh, this DNN, DNN7 folder. And then under the root of that website folder is desktop modules. That's the one we're going to select as our, as our project folder. Make sure create directory for solution is unchecked and then click OK. The first screen you'll get is the wizard screen for setting up our project properties. Now the convention I use for here for the root namespace is company name dot modules dot project name. Now dot project name is auto automatically filled out for us. So we just need to change the company name. So I'll name this dot net nuclear and I'll set the owner name which is the your company. I'll change the email address I will change the website address to my own and then on web server since we're setting it up in IIS I'm gonna pick IIS here and if you remember our IIS site for this installation is dnn7 dot dnndev dot me that's the binding that we set up for this site now we'll click finish and it will create our module. So for those of you familiar with .NET Nuke module templates in general, you know that, that most of them have an MS build task trigger that happens on a release build that will create our module install packages automatically. This template's no exception. So let's do a release build right now just to see if that works. Okay, the build succeeded, and if we look at if we do a show all files, you can see there's an install folder here, and it created our install and source packages. Let me go back for the benefit of IIS Express users and create the project one more time this time using web matrix. First of all, I have a, another .NET Nuke 7 website. It's uh, installed under my documents, my websites, .NET Nuke 706. And I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say open website with Microsoft Web Matrix. And when Web Matrix starts up, it's going to look like this. And what it did was it created a, 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 a dynamic URL with a port for me. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go to Visual Studio. And just like before, I'm going to create a new project. 
and I'm going to pick my template and this time I'm going to pick my folder that's in IS Express or in Web Matrix. Here it is, .NET Nuke 706, and I'm going to select Desktop Modules as my folder. Again, uncheck, make sure this is unchecked, and click OK. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose IS Express as my web server, and I'm going to paste in the um, the URL that Web Matrix created for me. So it should look like that with a port number. And then click Finish. And that's it. Before we install our module package in DNN and start working with it, I want to show you a couple modifications I suggest making. In the module project, in the properties, you'll notice uh, on the web tab we have the changes that our template made, which is uh, using IIS and, um, and the, the URL and the, the root URL. I suggest copying this root URL and go up to the start action and select start URL and paste that in there. What this does is it makes it to where when you click on the um, the start debugging or F5 it will launch it at, um, in the proper place at, at our DNN or it'll launch our DNN website. The other thing is if on the application tab in the project properties you notice that the template gave our default namespace as company name dot modules dot project name which I like but uh, the assembly name is just our project name or solution name I like to take our um, company name and, and make the assembly name company name dot project name and that ensures uniqueness now once we do that and save it we also need to go into our DNN manifest file and make the change there as well. So we'll go down to the assembly section and make the same change there. Once we do that, we can do our release build. And then we're ready to install the, mo the module template and register it in DNN. Registering our module for the first time in DNN is easy since our module's build process creates the packages for us. We simply go to our website and log in as a super user. Then we can go to host, extensions, and click install extension wizard and the file we're going to choose is going to be in our desktop modules and our module name which is my MVP module install and we can pick either the source or the install package I guess it really doesn't matter since it's just going to install the same files over the ones in our project I'll just pick source and we'll go through the wizard and should have installed our module the most important thing about going through this exercise is the fact that uh, it installed the uh, or it registered our module definitions in DNN. Uh, we needed to do that in order to start working with this module. So now that the module is installed, let's just verify it in the listing of extensions here. Here it is, my MVP module. Now we can go and create a page for it, and I think I already have one here called test module and we can then drop that mo the module onto the page.
Now this, uh, this module, let me get rid of this HTML one. This module you'll notice is a fully functioning uh, module. And um, so you could see that the default view, it says no items exist, click on add item. So we already have a view set up, we already have an edit set up, so we can add the item and we can see a fully functioning view and edit and data layer working here. So you can see I have my item here. This ends up being a list of items. If you add multiple, you can edit the item or you can delete the item. So now that we have our module installed, we have our project created, it is time to customize the code for our purposes. Let's talk about the first common error we can get when we're creating a project uh, from our template, and that is the creating a project for a non-existent web website or URL. If we start a new module project and we put in a web server URL that doesn't exist, you'll see this error. The web application project module is configured to use IIS. The web server could not be found. That just happens because we entered a URL that either for IIS Express is, is not a, an active um, port um, you know, with the web server started, or an IIS, it's not a binding, or again, the website's not started. So just make sure that you have the website functioning, the .NET Nuke site is functioning before you go to create the project. Another common error we can get is when we try to open a project without admin privileges, uh, for especially for projects in IIS where they're in, the website's in a location that's not uh, readily accessible by the current user in, uh, in Windows 7. Um, so what happens there is, and this can happen whether you open an existing project or you create a new one. So here I'm going to try to open a project that's in an IIS folder. As you can see, it actually loaded the test, but it, it, the, the main module uh, up here, the load failed. And again, that's because I don't have sufficient privileges. All I have to do then is simply close, open, make sure I open Visual Studio as an administrator. and the project, as you can see, opens just fine. And again, this applies to both um, creating the project or opening an existing project. Here's a screenshot of another common error that I sometimes see. When you go to your website and some unknown error happens like this, uh, what typically happens is like Visual Studio or something else creates an unwanted virtual directory within I your IIS site. It's typically on the desktop modules folder itself, uh, which causes this error. It's kind of uh, uh, my mysterious. <laughs> um, but the way to resolve it is just go back to IIS and look through and see if there's any virtual directories. Like for example, in the desktop module folder where the folder icon has that little arrow next to it. And if that happens, just right click on it and say remove. And that should remove that virtual directory and resolve the issue. One other annoyance to watch out for is every so often you might be working on your module and you discover when you come to the, the page that your module's on, you get some random exceptions that are, that are uh, fairly cryptic. One of the first things that I look at is when I go back to my project, 
uh, I looked to see if somehow uh, a web config file was generated within my project folder. These can happen um, if you're using Entity Framework or maybe adding a web reference and Visual Studio decides to put to uh, to put information in a web config file and just create it for you and um, and it's not necessary. Uh, the easiest thing to do here is just is just delete that web config file and that will usually resolve these types of problems.